All right, welcome everybody to, according to Andrew, number 19, what if Japan never attacked Pearl Harbor? Uh, <clears throat> so I am a big history uh, nerd, and alternate history always kind of is a fun um, mind game and uh, thought experiment to kind of run in your head, kind of hypo hypotheticals. I think it's really fun. Um, and I came across... Uh, I'm sure plenty of you are familiar with Alternate uh, History Hub. And I really like his videos. I think they're really informative. Um, but he had made one called What If uh, Japan Had Never Attacked Pearl Harbor. And I thought his conclusion was kind of weird. Um, he basically said if it hadn't happened, Russia wins anyway, uh, despite having to fight a war on two fronts. So I thought that was kind of weird. So I'm going to give my version because, you know, it's Alternate History. Maybe he would have been right. Uh, we have no way of truly knowing. Um, so that was his take. I decided I'd, I'd give my own. Um, so uh, we might actually have visuals for you this time. Because uh, I've been... Uh, I'm going to be using like the Hearts of Iron 4 game to kind of give some, some map visual stuff. Because it's convenient. Uh, so we, that screenshots from that. And we'll probably be jumping in game uh, to just kind of give some, some demonstration type of stuff. Uh, but let me pull up my little outline here. So, it's 1941, and Japan decides not to attack America. Okay, so because of this, one key major thing happens in 1941 that wouldn't happen in, uh, in our current timeline. And that is, uh that Russia cannot move troops from its eastern border to its western. Now, in theory, let me double check that time. Uh, when did Japan sign that non-aggression pact? So it was signed... April 13th, 1941, and Operation Barbarossa started, uh, I believe, in June. Let me make sure I got my dates right here. Yeah, June 22nd. So, they would have... So, I guess this is two things. So, if they're... Okay, so if they decide they're not going to attack Pearl Harbor... It doesn't necessarily make sense to sign this non-aggression pact. Now, they were really pissed off at Germany for signing a non-aggression pact with Russia. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Doo -doo -doo, which was German Soviet uh, non-aggression pact. We signed it on August 23rd, 1939, and uh, Japan was fighting um, Russia at that time. So, they were pretty, pretty pissed off, and uh, they would probably still be mad. But, the thing is, if they're not fighting uh, the Soviet Union, maybe they don't have a reason to sign a non-aggression pact, or maybe... They decide to, these are kind of big maybes, but uh, to break their non-aggression pact like the uh, Germans did, right? So they have a non-aggression pact. Now, their non-aggression pact would only be in effect for like a couple months, for one. And Japanese honor probably wouldn't allow them to do that. As such, um, it's, okay, I guess we're, I guess we're throwing two things in there. They don't sign a non-aggression back to the Soviet Union. So, because of that, um, they're going to have a hard time focusing on China. Uh, they don't probably have enough troops. Uh, but the big thing is they don't have to worry about the ocean, right? They take care of, of the British Navy over here. Uh, the Italian Navy keeps uh, the British Navy tied up, and they don't have the threat of the American Navy. Now, the American Navy is going to be able to outproduce them and all that stuff, and they will have a bigger Navy, but Japan might just have to settle for being number two Navy. And hope that America doesn't get imperialistic. And jet, like, 
America isn't imperialist in the normal way you think of imperialist powers, like Imperial Japan and stuff like that. Like, we act like we're not taking places over. So, because of that, um, Japan can probably play that off. Now, they still have an oil problem, and that's one of their biggest things they got to overcome. Uh, because the embargo on America, or the, the oil embargo from America is still going to be in effect. And you could potentially get oil from, uh, does Venezuela have oil at this time? Uh, one second. Resources. So you could potentially get oil from like Venezuela and some of the, the South American places, but America has pretty good influence over, you know, uh, Central and South America probably at this point, or, or at this point, as far as I'm aware, uh, mainly through the workings of, uh, speak softly but carry a big stick teddy roosevelt so trading with south america is probably out of the question so uh that's why capturing key oil places in uh with the dutch east indies and british malaysia are going to be critical for japanese success um and also if if they basically own the seas and they don't have anyone to really compete against them because most of the british navy is going to be over in the um Atlantic, they probably don't need to, they have to worry about oil because they, they have plenty of supply lines and stuff like that, um, but it isn't as pressing of a concern as if you are fighting a full-scale naval uh, warfare type situation. So, um, they, uh, so the December 7, 1941 offensive that they do that captures like the Philippines and like a bunch of places um, in the... Uh, uh, Southeast Asia, so they they could probably they will probably still do that, uh, but they don't go for the Philippines. They leave the Philippines alone because they they're trying not to piss off America, and they're basically banking that um, there's enough uh, pressure against the Americans getting involved that they can keep them out of the war and hope that British material or American material doesn't reach their enemies. That's kind of what they're banking on. Now American. Uh, the American political system is going to want to get involved in this war, and they're going to try to find a way. Now, Pearl Harbor was the easy slam dunk to get pe uh, everyone riled up for a war, and then uh, Germany declaring war on America, number two. Now, because Pearl Harbor doesn't happen, Germany doesn't really have a reason to declare war. Now, they, uh, if they take over all of Europe, that was part of Hitler's whole thing, uh, mainly because of Jewish influence over uh, Hollywood in America, uh, and probably the banking system as well at this time. Um, so, but he, he's not going to have a reason to even think about doing anything with America until he's wrapped everything up into Europe. Um, so the biggest threat that America, or that the Germany has, or the biggest threat the Axis has for America getting involved in the war, because if America's involved in the war, it's over. They produce way too much stuff. They outproduce like everyone in the war, and that would still be true in this timeline. Um, so the they can't beat the industrial might of America. So their best bet is to keep America out of the war. Their America is probably going to try to get into the war via U-boat um, shenanigans, because they're going to be sending materials over to Britain. One of the key ways they can uh, potentially, so one of the ways that they could potentially. Um, maneuver around this is because the Dominion of Canada um, is still part of Britain at this point, or is it its own country at this point? Either way, uh, Britain could probably call in Canada into the war, right? So if Canada's heading over and getting involved in the war, uh, one route that Americans have to say, hey, we don't want to put our, our boys on the line getting killed in a war that isn't our fight. So, America still does a lot of the heavy lifting of production for Britain, and they're, Britain's still buying them, but they use Canada as a proxy, right? So they, uh, they buy all this stuff from America, America ships it up to Canada, and then Canada ships it over to England. And therefore, it's British ship, or uh, Canadian ships getting sent over, and uh, Germany doesn't have to risk getting into a war with the United States, and then the United States is then not going to get into a war with Japan. Uh... The big thing is that key materials are not going to be going to the Soviet Union. 
Uh, and even if they do get sent to the Soviet Union, the most the the most straightforward way to get materials to the Soviet Union is by sending them out of the West Coast over to the uh, to the uh, Soviet Union's East Coast. Um, and you know what? I am just going to turn this game cache on. One second here. Um, turn you off. Turn game capture on. All right. So now we got we got visuals. So okay. So the easiest way is to send uh, from the United States all the way over to the Soviet Union. But if Japan controls these shipping lanes and just can capture basically all of the, if Japan can capture the coastline of here and considering that they have the superior navy, that's reasonably possible. What they can do is they can just let them ship the stuff over. It gets dropped off at these ports, and they control the ports, and then they just take it, the material for themselves, making it so they don't need to commit any bloodshed with the American shipping, and it's basically Amer uh, so the Soviet Union paying for goods from America and it getting dumped into uh, the Japanese war machine. It's like a win-win-win for them. Um, that might instigate some anger, but the thing is, it's, it's going to be kind of like the embargo kind of thing. Uh, that we have a bunch against a bunch of countries right now it well, the people in it feel it but like uh you know if other countries are smuggling stuff into those countries it, it's not as big of a deal as long as american uh men aren't dying for this pointless war the american people aren't going to have that big of a problem of like okay well we sent the stuff over and it got sent to the wrong person because they control the shipping lanes like the biggest argument is be like well we should probably stop sending stuff to the soviet union um, they could potentially send it from the East coast, but again, that's very risky. Uh, they got it. And if it's too cold, they can't really get to the Northern ports of the Soviet Union. Soviet Union doesn't have, uh, um, shipping lanes that work really well. You can't really go through the Mediterranean. Um, and you can't go through the, uh, Baltics because, uh, you know, Germany's right there, right? It's, it's a choke point. So the Soviet Union is kind of on its own at this point. And because of that, uh, the German offensive of 1941, Operation Barbarossa, is going to be far more effective. And the counterattack, uh, because the Soviet Union is going to have troops tied up in its eastern front as well, the counterattack is never going to come, or it's not going to come with the fresh troops that they need to be able to push back Barbarossa, and the Soviet Union is going to fall. Uh, <clears throat> with this fall of the Soviet Union, it frees up Japan to take over the rest of China, and to uh, try to get Britain out of India. So that's that's another objective that they're going to have. Is So basically, once the Soviet Union falls, that is the thorn out of their side, that the Soviet Union um, is preventing Germany from being able to focus fully on, on Britain, who's been the one that's really kind of... who's been at war with them the longest, but can't really do much about it because they are an island nation. And the same with... Britain, they're like, we have a navy, but we have no way of invading the mainland, and even if we did, you know, the Germans had the best uh, military and best troops in the world at that time, so they'd get rolled. Um, so now that the Soviet Union's out, uh, a couple key things. So oil is secured for the Axis in a big way. Uh, you have the Caucasus, obviously, is a big um, oil dump, and uh, you have a direct connection to Iran, um, being that Hitler saw Iran as part of the Aryan group, uh, you could form an alliance there, which is a big deal, and that also gives you access to oil. And as long as you're able to get um, Britain out of India, and you could do this by convincing uh, Britain, basically you could incite a rebellion in India and have Japan basically back uh, the Indians and have them overthrow it and try to u basically because I don't think Japan would want to control India. Uh, they want to control over the other um, Japanese or not Japanese, but the other um, Asian peoples. They didn't really care much about like the Indians or the Russians so much. So they wanted influence over China. They want to influence over uh, all of uh, Southeast Asia. These are the places they really kind of care about. Um, so the Philippines would be kind of one that's on their list maybe, but it's something that they'd have to, if they want to win this war, it's something they're going to have to wait on. Uh, 
So if they can get the British out of here, now they have con complete control of this area and no one to really challenge them. They do have the American Navy, but the American Navy isn't hostile. They're doing stuff that's annoying, but it's something that at this point they can mitigate because they have oil secured um, through the Indies down here. And also by being able to have control of the Indian Ocean, they're able to create a safe shipping lane from Iran all the way to Japan. Oil has been secured. Uh, and you could potentially have a couple uh, alliance-type ports through India. Basically, they would create a, kind of a vassal-type state where it's like, we'll take care, kind of what America does now, right now, we'll take care of your Navy, naval problems as long as you allow us some ports and then maybe uh, lend some of your industrial capacity to us, though India would have been pretty rural at this point. Um, another key area now, and now that once Russia's out of the war, the key point of focus is going to be the Suez Canal. And the reason for that is they need a navy to invade uh, the United Kingdom. The second biggest navy in the world right at this point would be the Japanese navy, the first being American, um, provided the American industrial capacity uh, went and kept building. the. Their industrial plan was to have X amount of ships, and those amount of ships were going to um, outstrip the Japanese Navy by 1942, I think, uh, if Japan didn't do anything. That's why they attacked Pearl Harbor. If they just kind of accepted the fact that the Americans were going to have a bigger Navy and they couldn't really do anything about that, and it was something they were going to just kind of deal with later, um, they're going to have a bigger Navy, but they're still going to have the second biggest Navy in the world. And more importantly, they have carrier superiority against their what is now the only naval power left in the war, Britain. Britain has like one, maybe two carriers, and they don't have the doctrine um, associated to make them a very effective fighting force. Uh, earlier in the war, Japan already knocked out a major uh, battleship of the British in, um, in the east here. And so once they control all of this area, um, they can send all their carriers over to uh, Europe to be able to stage a mass invasion of Britain. Uh, one of the key areas for this is going to be taking the Suez Canal. And so uh, in our timeline, the uh, offensive took place during... When did the... It was kind of happening at the same time as Russia. But I think they would have spent more time focusing on Russia and... Uh, less time focusing on uh, North Africa. And then once Russia Russia was wrapped up and a lot of key supplies were secured, like oil and, and rubber and stuff like that, then their focus becomes North Africa again. They take the Suez Canal. Once they got the Suez Canal, they have control of the Mediterranean. They have control of the Indian Ocean. They have control of the Pacific. Now they just need to get control of the Atlantic via closing Britain off from all trade and starving them out, basically. Uh, they could just go with a starve-out strategy, or um, they could knock out their navy and threaten to invade, and that might be enough for the British, British to um, concede. Otherwise, they're going to have to do a mass uh, invasion, uh, like, what was it, Operation Sea Lion was the plan. So they'll revive something like that and do a mass invasion of the British Isles. Um, if Britain was staring down the might of uh, Japan, Italy, and uh, Germany after they had just taken out the Soviet Union, I highly doubt that they wouldn't just concede and, and find some concession. And I don't know if Germany would actually want to occupy there if them becoming just basically a vassal state is good enough for them and just taking a bunch of their uh, African territories to secure uh, key resources like uh, chromium and uh, tungsten for advanced weaponry. Uh, so that kind of takes care of all of that, and at that point, they've basically secured most of the world, and then there's just the question of America, uh, which they will attack, but the question is how, and that's kind of unclear. Um, your best bet is to probably try to gain influence in, like, your South America's type place to create a... Uh, a launch pad to go at America from. Uh, you could also potentially do it with Mexico. Um, and these various countries would probably be disenfranchised and disillusioned with how uh, some of the American 
unwanted American influence that they had. Um, Argentina was obviously sympathetic to uh, Germany. That's a little too south to, to stage it. Ideally, you would want some place like a Cuba or a Venezuela. These places are much uh, better bets to staging a mass invasion of uh, the United States. Um, and at this point, this is where Japan could uh, do your uh, Pearl Harbor and try to knock out the American Navy and take the Philippines, and they would be in a much better position. Now, the thing is, America is still producing. Like, the American uh, industrial machine would still be insane, and there's no great way to invade America. This is one of the advantages America's had throughout its entire history, is it's like... It can be completely cut off from everything and it has all the supplies it needs to uh, create self-sufficient industry. It has massive industrial, an industrial pool that it can pull from. And, uh, and it's basically an island. So there's no great way to get there, but the fact of the matter is once they get most of this done, that was... I don't want to say it was the hard part, because getting over to America is going to be a problem, but I that almost classifies as another war, right? Like, the war of Europe, the war of Asia, like, World War II has basically wrapped up at this point. Now, it's there's a new venture, and it's how to conquer America, and that would be the, the next step. And I don't really have answers to that. I think this is kind of gone into and covered uh, how they would get that done. Um in this now there's a couple issues here and that is that the axis is far more coordinated than they actually were in real life uh the axis didn't coordinate very well um on a lot of big plans and that's why you would see disjointed things like uh germany uh with japan signing a non-aggression pact like two months before or three months before uh germany would end up breaking their non-aggression pact and invading the soviet union so there's like a lot of weird things like that. Um, one option is because they both did, if they, they decided to both sign a non-aggression pact, is they could try to fulfill that. And if Japan had tied some caveat where the Soviet Union broke their non-aggression pact with Germany, that they would break their the non-aggression pact with Japan, and it threatened a two-front war, I don't know what Stalin would do in that situation. Um, but if that was the situation at hand, um, it would allow, uh, people like America to keep shipping material over to the Soviet Union and, uh, be able to bolster their war machine to the point that they may, that, uh, the Soviet Union could potentially repel a two-front war, um, when that went hot and they were gearing up for a war, uh, with Germany, just not in, uh, 41 when they were invaded. They were looking for a war probably 42, 43. Uh, if that was done, then um, Japan could focus on finishing off uh, China and conquering all of that and potentially pressuring the British out of India um, and securing their oil down here in, um, in East Asia, or, uh, Southeast Asia. But... Those are kind of kind of the options that were available to them. Uh, anyway, this is only like... There's a million ways that you can kind of come up with uh, what would happen uh, it, with these counterfactuals. So that's my take on it. Uh, hopefully you found that interesting. Um, I'll leave a link to uh, Alternate History Hub's video uh, if you guys are interested in listening to that one. Uh, maybe you prefer his take, maybe you prefer mine. Uh, but yeah. Hopefully you found it interesting, and, uh, you know, I got to use slightly different visuals this time around, so uh, hopefully that was a little bit more engaging. But anyway, um, thank you guys for listening. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. Give me your own uh, takes on this. I'd be interested to hear them. And uh, have a good day.